Welcome one, welcome all to the Snail Trail 4x4 podcast. If you like going off-roading in Toyotas, wrenching on Toyotas, camping in Toyotas, and possibly poking a little bit of fun at Toyotas, and of course hearing about how awesome the Toyota forums are, then this is the podcast for you. Hello, everybody. My name is Jimmy Jett, and sitting beside me is nobody. Uh, Well, actually, there's uh, Barbie Dreamhouse with a bunch of Barbies and one Ken, that lucky guy. He's sitting beside me over there. But yes, I am uh, still semi-quarantined. I'm a a little bit alone over here in the corner. Tyler was off gallivanting this weekend, so uh, we weren't able to actually sit down together and record. But I phoned in a friend. I phoned in one of our good buddies, Austin, and we will be talking to him a little bit later. Austin is the uh, owner-slash-operator of irate 4x4 and since we just jumped on to irate 4x4 for all of our podcasting forum needs i wanted him to be able to jump on here and be able to share his story with everybody and uh, talk about the forums and new things coming and of course we have to talk about his amazing unimog uh, Jason and I, back in the day of, geez, like two years ago, uh, got to interview Austin back when he uh, wandered into our camp down at King of the Hammers. And um, it's been a few years, like I said, since we interviewed him. So I did think that uh, we needed to recover some of the items that we had covered on their episode. And we had a whole bunch more to cover about new things that were going on with the forum. So I do hope you enjoy that episode of the podcast coming up here shortly. But before I get to that interview with Austin, I do want to let everybody know that we do have a giveaway going on this month. Only a few more days for you to get into it. You need to be entered before the last day of the month. And let's see, what would that be? This is July. So there are are 31 days in this month. Or Tyler would say probably some random 37 days or something like that. Anyways, you need to be entered on or before the last day of the month to get entered for a Spartan, uh, I believe it's a kinetic rope, and two soft shackles. You also get a whole bunch of swag from Spartan uh, stickers and some other goodies inside of that box. And who knows, maybe we'll throw in some swag as well. But to get entered on to or into this giveaway, you need to go on to irate 4x4 and go to the Snail Trail 4x4 forum section, podcast section down below. And then on the right side, if you're on a desktop, There is uh, multiple ways to enter right there. Or if you're mobile, scroll down to the bottom. And right at the bottom there, there will be those same ways to enter as well. I also had a good chat with our buddy CJ, with a CJ. And uh, he is progressing, but it's slowly. And I did want to bring him up uh, once again, just because he does have that GoFundMe going on. We have talked about it in the past, but I do wanted to just bring it to everybody's attention that if you uh, feel a donation uh, deep in your heart or a swelling in your gut for a generous uh, giving person out there that we've talked about here on the podcast, um, we'll have that link in the show notes and um Anything helps, you know, quarters to dollars to thousands of dollars. Anything will help CJ uh, with his recovery efforts and bills that um, he will have to pay. Uh, He does have medical insurance and he uh, probably will have some coverage or a lot of coverage from that. However, there will regardless be some medical bills that won't be covered by medical insurance. So anything will help him. So if you can feel generous or gracious enough to donate, that'd be fantastic for the off-roading community and for our good buddy, CJ. I do believe that is uh, the mass amount of updates and housekeeping that I need to do for this episode. uh, Tyler and I will be getting back together this week. I will be off my quarantine status and I am currently uh, COVID negative once again, so Tyler and I are going to be meeting up this week, 
and we will be doing jumping back to our regular podcast schedule, at least for this week. We'll see what happens next week. And uh, we'll cover a lot of other things coming up here in the Thursday episode. So with that, my friends, uh, go out, grab your lattes, your old fashions or your Manhattans. And I hope you enjoy this interview I had with Austin from Irate 4x4. Welcome back, ladies, gentlemen, and kiddos. Uh, I have on the mic here a very wonderful gentleman. Thanks you so much, Austin, for jumping in and uh, helping me out and recording a podcast while uh, Tyler is down in Southern California somewhere, uh, hanging out with Sprinter Vans or whatever the heck is he's doing. So welcome Sprinter to the show. Vans. Thank you. Thank yeah. You. <laughs> I think he went to some weird sprinter van thing. I will, I'll hear we're all hear about it in, on Thursday's yeah. episode. I'm not yeah. quite sure what he's doing. He sent me some, sent posted some things up on his uh, stories, which he never posts on stories. Of I think he was somewhere in Big Bear down down in Southern oh, cool. California. So, cool. yeah, how you been, man? It's been a while. It has been a minute. I haven't been out that way in a while. Uh, been doing good. Just uh, working on the site, trying to focus on making that grow and. Helping out the uh, off-road community where we can, trying to get my rig built. You know, it's always a never-ending story when you're wrenching on rigs. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so, tell me about it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've got I've got uh, to rip apart parts of Bobcat again. Hopefully within a week or so, so I can make it out to the Rubicon here in a, in another week. Uh, uh, meet up with some new some old friends and some new ones. So. Yeah, I, I get it, man. I we're always we're always wrenching, always trying to keep up with things. I definitely want to get into the Unimog and the form here in a little bit. But why don't you uh, give yourself an introduction? Tell the people who you are and uh, why we're chatting today. Yeah, my name is Austin Priest. Um, I'm uh, the owner, and I run irate 4 x 4com dot com, uh, and that kind of came into existence because of uh, Pirate Four x Four, kind of went downhill, was sold off, and uh, the community wasn't very happy with the current owners. So we uh, we dropped the P off Pirate, and we, uh, we all moved over to Irate 4x4. So <laughs> that same old community yeah. from 20-something years old is uh, we're all living there now. <laughs> and living strong, that's for sure. It's a, it's yeah. an active forum, man. I didn't... I mean, well, I'll, I'm going to badger you about forums here in a, you know, a little later about... Are they a dying breed or not? So you can start prepping your idea as, yeah. <laughs> for your answer there. But, um, you know, I, I've always assumed that forums were going to be a dying breed, but this one's, man, this one's still strong, very active and, um, and tons of users daily on that thing. I can see those numbers down below, um, for sure. So, yeah. well, y- you want to retaliate already on, th- on that topic? No, it, it definitely is. It's it's one of those things, you know, Pirate was kind of going down. Everybody's kind of expected that would kind of happen with the social media boom that happened years ago. But uh, I think after people kind of moved over to those platforms, the Facebooks and the Instagrams, the, I mean, they're good for that uh, instant gratification type stuff. But if you really are doing a build or you have like a serious question, you need help doing, you know, rebuilding or, or setting some axle gears, whatever, um just the basic format of a forum is 10 times more uh, user-friendly and easier to come back to and, and find the rig that you were watching this guy build for the last six months. You know, it's, it's a lot harder to do on Facebook and Instagram. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think it's, a, it's definitely a much closer community, too. Um, I feel like Facebook and Instagram, you kind of just jump on there and you scroll through what's been posted today and, and that's it. Maybe I'm sure you do. If you get into some groups, you can probably get a, a good sense of that too. But, uh, for some reason, whatever it is, it just seems like a much, uh, much tighter knit group on the forum still. So yeah, funny. you're right. I think that's right. a, that, go ahead. They, they've definitely taken a, a nosedive forums in general have, um, aside from Facebook and Instagram and all those guys, that company that bought the, uh, like pirate and all these other ones, they, they have a pretty good knack for just tanking those sites. So, and they own, they literally own over a thousand sites now. And you think about wow. how much, what, uh, tech is out there and all the documentation that they pretty much just tanked in the name of advertising. 
Uh, right. That's just ran a lot of people away. That doesn't help a lot. It leaves a, a bad taste in people's mouth. So, mm-hmm. um, since yeah, we're able well, to fire this up and keep some people, I think it's been, it's been very good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I want to talk about that migration from pirate to irate here in a little bit. But before we do, why don't we give people a little bit about your backstory? Um, who are you and like, where'd you grow up? Did you, were you always, are you considered the South? Is that, are you the South out there? No, we're uh, Midwest. We're, we're flying the country. Okay. Yep. Um, so yeah, always, uh, in the St. Louis area, lived within an hour or so of downtown my whole life. Um, never down there. So, uh, kind of grew up when I was younger. There was a place here called Lesterville and that's on the Black River. And, uh, that's where everybody went four wheeling. So my dad had a big truck. He had a couple three wheelers. When I was finally old enough, I got my, I got a little Honda 70 and, uh, I was just, I was the coolest thing ever on that little Honda 70 down there, splashing through the river and in the rocks and all that. And, uh, as a kid, from my memory, it seemed like almost every weekend we were, we were down there camping and you just make a lot of friends down there. Uh, so I always look forward to the weekends. I could meet up my, with my buddies on their three wheelers and we go riding around. So it was nice. a lot of fun. That's was kinda, it, a, was it mudding or was there trails out there? Rocks? What kind of wheeling was it? No, we got in the, uh, so the Black River, there's a lot of the rivers around here have a, a gravel bed to them. So, um, there's a lot of water to play in, but it's all gravel. Now, depending upon where you go, which parts of Missouri you go in, you could definitely find the muddy trails and all that. So we have a lot of that and uh, we definitely love that here. That, that's one of the best smells ever to get that burning mud on the headers for the first time, the first season you go <laughs> yeah. out. And then after that, you get tired of cleaning mud, but <laughs> that first time is always the best smell. Right. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So do you wait for like summertime and then the r- rivers are down and you can drive around on the rocky, uh, um, river bed at that point because there's no water in it or is there kind of a continuous flow of water and you just are splashing back and forth through the river yeah back then it was uh you know we're talking in the mid 80s when there was there's was no laws about being able to drive through the water and all that kind of stuff so uh but lesterville that area down there it was uh i bet it was at any given point 100 foot 200 foot wide of just rock bed and the, and the river would just raise and lower and so you just set up camp on the rocks there and uh, go play in the water. Sometimes you'd be further away. Sometimes you'd be closer, depending upon how much rain you got. But uh, right, it was a hell of a lot of fun. There were some just some places down there, like a place called the Barnyard Hole. It was probably, to me and my young mind, 120 feet deep. <laughs> but wow. I don't know what it yeah. was. I don't, I don't know what it really was. Probably you know 30 feet maybe. But uh, the big trucks would go down there, and that was those were like the heydays of like. Uh, like Bob Chandler was down there, like Bigfoot. That's where Bigfoot uh, kind of got their start and played down there. Oh, so, that's cool. Okay. Yeah. So my dad had a Bigfoot, but not like the original Bigfoot, not not the big big guys. Uh, and that's what the that was kind of the just kind of paint the picture of what Lesterville was. Just those kind of big trucks down there playing around, having fun. So it was got rainy. it. So so what did you have? What were you riding around in? What did your dad have? Did he, I mean, you said he had a Bigfoot. So what, I mean, was he tractor tires and everything or is it just some big old 35s at the time? They probably were like 35s in my mind. They were like what we see on Bigfoot today. Uh, they were were definitely my height back then. So, uh, but I would guess, I don't even know what they had available back then. Uh, 35s probably, 32s. Um, but he just had a Ford, uh, I think he had a F250 maybe. I'm not, I'm not sure what it was, what model it actually was. A big brown thing, and he made me a custom seat to sit in the middle, and that was my spot to go play in the water and, and hold on in case uh, we got deep. <laughs> nice. So it was a lot That's of fun. fun. That was a, and, again, that was like, you know, Bob Chandler started uh, uh, Bigfoot back then, and that was they started that in Ferguson. I'm sure you guys have heard of Ferguson. The whole country's heard of Ferguson mm-hmm. the last several years. They started that because there was – no place to get off, you know, four wheel drive off road stuff back then. So they started that not too far from us. And that kind of set off a big boom of off roading and four wheeling down there. So, oh, cool. It was, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. That's excellent. So, what did you first get? Like, what was one of your first four by four rigs? Uh, my first rig was a, a CJ5. Um, oh, well, podcast is over. Uh, Thanks very much. All right. 
So, all right, we'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. CJ5, no, you was, got a little, little Jeep, huh? I did. It, it, it was a little Jeep with a lot of heart. It was, uh, so I had met, uh, it was actually my college instructor. Um, so by, you know, they shut down at Lesterville area because of all the water preservation laws and all that kind of stuff. And then kind of didn't wheel through high school and that kind of stuff. And I met a professor in college and, uh, he invited me out for a drinks bar with his friends one night. So we went out to the bar and then we got to talking off road stuff. And then like a weekend or two later, I'm up at his farm, which was a couple hundred acres that he owned. And, uh, so we'd go up there and they all had Jeeps. So, and I'm like, yeah, you know, I just, I missed that a lot and, uh, stupid me, you know, young, dumb, I would took my brand new truck out there and messed it all up. So, uh, the girl I was dating at the time and had enough of that. So she went, she actually bought me my first Jeep. <laughs> oh, wow. So, uh, she goes, Hey, I got a surprise for you in the garage. And we went out there and it was this, uh, big white, uh, broke CJ five. <laughs> so that Sweet. was my first, first, uh, dive into wrenching or any of that kind of stuff was getting that thing fixed up and back on the road. So that's, that's a pretty good little story there. The, your first yeah. vehicle was actually purchased by your girlfriend at the time. Yeah. Not, yeah. not current wife. No. No. Different the, uh, one? Okay. No, she the Jeep wasn't a keeper longer. in the long run. No, no. Uh, the Jeep <laughs> lasted longer than she did, I think, to be honest with you. <laughs> yeah. And the, and the habits definitely lasted a lot longer. <laughs> so. Yeah. Understood. So what happened after the CJ5? Did you uh, migrate to anything else? Or I know what you have now, but was there anything in between there? Yeah. No, I've had a bunch of CJs over the years. A um, couple CJ7s, I think two CJ5s. I had a CJ8 project that I was trying to like restore back to original just to have like a pretty Jeep to drive around. But uh, we spent too much time bashing stuff up and fixing other Jeeps. I never really got that project done. So uh, unfortunately, I'd love to have it now. I kind of kicked myself in the butt for that. But it, Yeah, that'd you know. be neat. You don't <laughs> yeah. see those around very much, that's for sure. No, you don't. No, especially like yeah. nice restored ones. And if you do, you know, these days they want like 50 grand for one. <laughs> right. Uh, in this market. Yeah. But. Was, so, yeah, um, was, what was that? I always been a Jeep guy. Uh, and, uh, I got, think that was more because of the people that I was wheeling with just kind of got me into it. And, uh, they had just, uh, all kinds of spare Jeeps up at that farm. So, you know, if something broke, you'd, you'd have a part right there and, it was, it was kind of silly to get into anything else at that point. So, and right. they were the ones that really taught me how to wrench and work on, you know, anything really. So, uh, yeah. And did you dive Jeeps. deep into modifications on those? Did you like, you know, do some, get bigger axles to get bigger tires to maybe changing out T cases or did you do what sort of modifications did you do? Yeah. Just on that very first one. Um, so I got it from, uh, or my, my girlfriend got it, and the reason she picked it up at a, at the steel she did, uh, the guy had busted the axles in it, and then we found out later the uh, T case was out too. Um, he was using it to try to do mud runs at some of the, our local uh, uh, mud runs that we have here. So yeah, the uh, events. he had big old tall. Um, I don't remember what they were. I want to say they were at least thirty fives, but they were like nine inch wide TSLs on them. So, yeah, pizza cutters. Uh, Yep, exactly. <laughs> um, so they came in, the axles were busted on that, and uh, me being new and not wanting to lean on those guys for as much as I already have been leaning on them, I started jumping on forums back then. And uh, for the life of me, I can't remember the name of the Jeep forum it is. I, I think about it frequently, but I can't remember what it is. And I started asking questions on there, and like, you're you're just going to have to go to, I hate to keep saying, I hate to keep saying that name out, out loud on your show, but Pirate. And uh, they're like, you're going to have to go there. Don't say anything, just research, keep your mouth shut, and then when you absolutely cannot find uh, an answer to your question, then, then maybe you can post your question, otherwise they're going to eat you alive. And uh, and that's what I did. So I ended up coming home with a, uh, I found some J20 axles, so that was a, it's a 44 and a full floating 60, uh, and that was a, it's a Jeep truck, so I brought, you know, much significantly wider than a CJ5. So nice, I brought okay. those back, and uh, I was going to drop those as a surprise on these guys one night when we were having Jeep night. We call it Jeep night. We 
just sit around, drink beer, and try to wrench on stuff. So I show <laughs> up with like those a good things. Time. Yeah. And I show up with those things, and they were laughing their ass off. I'm like, what the hell are you going to do with those things? There ain't no way those things are going to fit under there. I'm like, no, no, no. I saw it on the site. It's going to work. <laughs> so getting those under there, uh, once we started getting those under there, uh, their eyes started opening up a little bit. And I mean, these guys are very skilled mechanics and, and everything anyway, but I don't think they uh, kind of thought about mixing and matching parts like that to that extent. And then the next thing is I got a T18. I put that in there and that, you know, once they started driving that around at the farm, they could really see the, the advantage of the gearing and that thing. So yeah, we definitely got into tweaking them and all that. We, we'd swap out 304s, 360s, those AMCs. Um, Again, they had a bunch of parts cheaps there, so it was easy if you were having a problem with one, you'd grab a different motor and throw it in. Um, right. Yeah, so we, we did a lot of uh, a lot of mix and match parts on there just to play with them and, and get them up and running. So Nice. So do you still yeah. talk to this crowd? Do you still hang out? Do you still have Jeep Night? Most of them. So Jeep Night ran, I think we had it for 18 years. We had it once a week for 18 years. And, uh, and then we some of us kind of moved away like i moved even further away from those guys they did come out the king of the hammers with me so that was part of the crew there um and we kind of some of us kind of lost touch but uh we still say hey and when we run into each other and you know there's uh yeah no good group of guys and they definitely got me going and uh in this direction even more than i ever thought i would yeah yeah definitely so that's awesome. Um, it's always good to have a good group of friends around you to inspire and, you know, give you ideas and to naysay whenever possible. Right. You know, it's, right. I, I know that I've had that with, you know, we talk about, uh, Forerunner Dave and Hustle Nuts. They've been good friends of mine forever and a day, you know, since early high school times, you know, and, you know, I'm, we're many decades now past high school and, yeah. <laughs> um, and, and still hanging out and still wheeling and still having a good time. It's, you know, it's always fun to have those friends around whenever you can. True. True. Yeah. I miss, so, I miss our, uh, our Jeep nights, our weekly Jeep nights, but you're, you're right. There's no we'll start that. it up again. Are they too far away? We need to, we're about 45 minutes away from each other. No. I'd say not, not too Dang. far, but it's kind of far for doing that kind of stuff. Uh, Especially to the extent we used to. <laughs> sure. So. Understood. Um, so I guess what, so how did that progression from the Jeeps go to the Unimog that you currently have? Um, I got a couple JKs, um, just cause, uh, got married, had kids and, uh, needed some place to put car seats and I didn't want to stop wheeling. So I, I, I got, I sold the truck and the Jeeps and, or, uh, yeah, my CJs in my truck mm -hmm. and just went to a, a Jeep. I thought that was actually the first street legal Jeep I ever had was a JK to drive, uh, drive the family okay. around. So, um, got into those. Uh, the first one was a lot of fun and I found one at just a, a smoking deal, uh, out in Las Vegas while we were there. I'm like, this is like too, too good to pass up. It had, it was so dialed in that the guy, he paid to have everything done. It was all done professionally. It was just, he was just, uh, he had a JL on order. He goes, I need to make room in my garage. Just take it. So I got wow. an absolute steal on it. King shocks lift. I mean, the, the, it was a massive parts list. Uh, I think I posted about it on the forums. Um, so it was pretty awesome. So we, uh, my wife and I, we were in Vegas for, uh, I think it was a bachelor or bachelor, bachelorette party, combined party. And we went and picked that up and canceled our flight home and drove that home instead. So, uh, wheeled that for quite a bit. But, uh, yeah, after that, I just kind of thought I needed something other than Jeeps. I've been doing Jeeps for a long time. Not that I don't like them, but I just wanted something that was, uh, you know, different. And, uh, I've always had a kind of thing for military vehicles. So Unimog was always high on my list. And when I found, uh, a good deal on one, I, uh, finally pulled the trigger and got rid of all the Jeeps. <laughs> so. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So, did it when you got the Unimog? Was it a standard looking four hundred four, or was it modified then, or what? What status was it in? Yeah, so I've uh, found out a lot about it after getting more into the Unimog community because it was it kind of had made a name for itself. Uh, two owners before I got it. Uh, so most Unimogs, you know, they're they're like a convertible front with a, a truck bed on the back. 
Uh, right. This person had taken off the bed on the back and extended the cab into a four seater. So it had uh, four seats, a cage, um, and all that. This guy was a, uh, he owned some strip clubs in Vegas. So there was a okay. really big, well built floor slash stripper pole on top of the cage. And, uh, <laughs> Uh, I told my wife that that was definitely a, a flagpole to advertise I rate four by four, but uh, nice. it was did definitely. That, did she believe you? <laughs> no, no. She <laughs> saw right through that right away. <laughs> so uh, it's a it's a fun rig. Um, it sat in the desert for the so the previous owner it, uh, life. Uh, I think he was in the military, kind of got in the way. So it sat in the desert uh, probably about two hours from Vegas uh, for like three years. Oh wow! So everything was a little dry rotted on it. It needed a lot of TLC, and uh, so I bought it probably three months before the King of the Hammers in 2021 when I first met you guys and ran into you guys. Mm-hmm. Um, a member on I rate four by four. He goes, you know what? I was thinking about making a road trip and I needed something to do. He goes, he was from California. He goes, I'll, I'll pick that up and bring it to your house. I'm like, you gotta be shitting me. So he wow. did. He drove all the way down there, picked it up. And hauled it all the way to the house for me. Uh, so Dang. that was a good time. Yeah. I, I was sitting there looking. I was kind of in sticker shock trying to figure out how to get it here, shipping-wise. Because um, those things aren't light. So, But no, he picked it up, brought it here. And uh, I kept him well-fed, well well drunk. And uh, put him up in a hotel. <laughs> yeah. And the next day, he's like, all right, I've, I've had enough of that. I can't hang with you guys. And he uh, he left. <laughs> so Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it was awesome. We got in that. We got in the garage that night, and I've wanted a Unimog for so long. We just kind of sat there and stared at it, and uh, I'm like, "Oh, that's definitely not as good as the pictures." But uh, we just started making a list of what we had to do to it, and uh, started tackling all that. And got, I'd say, ninety five percent before we went to King of the Hammers. There was a lot of work to be done. Nice. And so that was twenty twenty. That was the end of 2020, when you yeah. 2020 yeah. when you went out to King... No, 2021. No, I, yeah, I bought it in t- at the end of 2020. I think like right at Thanksgiving. And then yeah. uh, 2021 is when I got out there and met you guys, so... You're right. Which was a lot yeah, of fun. Yeah, I, lot I remember of fun. you rolling into camp, uh, promoting Irate 4x4, and then you really never left. Yeah, you were just hanging no. out, <laughs> <laughs> drinking... Having some fun, hanging out by the Peter heater and the fire, and and yeah, I think your whole goal and motivation was to you know spread the word of I rate four by four. But then, as soon as you made it to our our campground, your our site area, you were like, "I found my people. I'm just going to stay uh, yeah. here the whole time." Yeah, you guys were really close to us. Um, once I mm-hmm. finally learned how to navigate around all the campsites there, <laughs> uh, that was my first time yeah. there. Yeah, we were and close. Then, uh, so I was going a long way around for a while, and it was probably like second to last night I finally figured out how I could just easily cut across a camp to be right right there with you guys. So, yeah, at the end of the night, if I if I saw you guys had a fire going, I, I always ended up there. And, and Jason, uh, man, the booze was flowing out of the back of there, so that was a, a hard place not to go visit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. he's uh, Jason's got quite the liquor cabinet in, at his house and at in his uh, camper, that's for sure. Yeah, so no, that definitely was awesome, fun. So, so uh, since uh, you know um, King of the Hammers, when I saw the rig and you've uh, you got the Unimog up to that drivability that you were romping around with the uh, flagpole uh, out at <laughs> King of the Hammers, right. what have you done with to it since? Uh, pretty much taken it apart. It's and it's it's uh, down to the frame and pieces in the sh- in the shop right now. Um, it, it, it never ran the best. We converted it to propane right before we went out there, and uh, it ran around pretty decently, but uh, it still needed some dialing in And after getting back and really having some time to look at the motor. The motor was pretty much shot in that thing. Um, so I bought a, I found a brand new motor for that thing that came in a crate. Uh, wow. It's Well, it's kind of neat. Uh, they're a pain in the ass to get, but there is, uh, so these are all military vehicles, and when they build these things there's massive military contracts to keep parts supplied forever so there's these warehouses uh all over europe that are stockpiled with brand new in the crate unimog parts 
a considerable amount of them. So I, I had a brand new windshield. I bought a new windshield, a new motor, uh, a few other brand new things, uh, new old stock stuff. And, and it's pretty cool to get that stuff. Uh, like that. Yeah, that's really open. neat. It's, it's like the VW bug, right? I mean, there's yeah. still the VW bug is still the old school bug is still being made in South America today. So you can yeah. buy new things, brand new things for an old school VW bug because it's still being made, which is, is pretty yeah. crazy. So That's there's awesome. these stockpiles yeah. of Unimog parts. So I can go get some 404 reduction box boxes over in Europe somewhere. Is that what you're telling me? Maybe. Uh, those are even <laughs> harder to find. I, some of the parts are easier to find than others. Those, those are getting really hard. That was the weak point on the Unimog. So I think uh, a lot of those have been replaced. I'm, I'm guessing those stockpiles have been gone through. So Yeah. Um, but those are one yeah. of the coolest features about the Unimog because that's the reduction box is what gives it that extra lift right there at those tires to give it the insane amount of ground clearance that it, it gets underneath those diffs and oh, yeah. lower it, gears. Yeah, there's a whole whole other set of uh, of reduction in those portal boxes themselves. So, yeah, the axles are uh, I think they're three point five, and then the hubs are two point one for a total of seven point five. So, so, sounds about right. Yeah. Yeah. When we had Joe from Carnage Welder on, we we went down a rabbit hole of Unimog's talk. So I heard that. Yeah. I th- I think that's uh we we were saying it was around a seven to one, seven and a half to one ratio just in the diffs or in the axle setup. So it's pretty yeah. insane. It is. Um, so they're awesome for that. So I'm uh, in my build here. I've, I've been looking at the new ones from 74 Weld. They, uh, you see them on all the 4400 cars right now. But uh, for much longer, they've been building those. They've been building uh, replacement ones for the Unimog axles. So they have them they can slap in there. And the nice thing about those is it's easy to, to convert to uh, disc brakes as well. So... I'm looking at getting those. I found myself a second steering axle that I'm going to put on the rear. Um, Ooh, so rear steer. Yeah, yeah nice. I, I don't, definitely won't have that by by uh, King of the Hammers. I'll be lucky to get it all back together by then. But uh, we'll definitely be working on on that soon with uh, one of the vendors on my site. He de- on on I rate four x four. Who's uh, he? Kind of specializes in uh, uh, hydro steering type products. So uh, oh, cool. working with him on that. Uh, and I actually, I got that crate motor home, not to backtrack too much, but I got that crate motor and those Unimogs have a whopping, a like 80 something horsepower to them. So, okay. um, yeah, there's, there's another motor out there and they're, they're kind of a unicorn, but they're from the older Mercedes, like uh two four door little coupe cars. Uh, they use the same block, but they have about twice the horsepower and they got seven bearings as opposed to four, uh, so it'll it'll let me put a turbo on it as well. So no sooner is than it I the 300D. That, no, that that's a those are the diesel ones. This is a M130, right. is what it is. Oh, okay. It's a gas, actually so, a gas engine. Yeah, it's a gas engine. Okay. And uh, so like the Unimogs are like seven to one. The heads are. And uh, I was running propane on there, and that propane like likes to be at ten to one. So these uh, these M130s are also have a, a they're nine point five to one, but with with the with the extra B for on the crank, it's it's pretty easy to put a turbo on these two. So I think I'm going to do that and put a Holly uh, injection on the top of that and see how that goes. So dang, that you that might be able to go actually, eighty down the freeway. Oh, uh, maybe maybe if I if I <laughs> if I get a big enough hill and the wind going the right way. <laughs> yeah. So if I can get up to two hundred horsepower, um, it sounds silly being really excited about two hundred horse, but uh, I think it'll make it a little more fun playing around in it so for sure i mean 200 horses sounds really good for my 22 re as well you know those yeah (laughs) those little things don't have a ton of a ton of horsepower either and pretty much all the the rock crawlers i own and have are 22 re's you know except for like my daily driver which is the the new third gen tacoma which has like 296 horsepower or something yeah. But yeah, that I mean my 22 RAs maybe break 100, so uh <laughs> 200 horsepower does sound mighty lovely for yeah. sure. <laughs> It'll be fun. It'll That's be a cool. different feel. Yeah, so. are you still rocking what tire you had some pretty gnarly tires on there. What did you have Maxis on there before no, uh, when, when you're No, Mickey Thompson hooked me up with a set, with a oh, set yeah. of uh 43 inch That's stickies what they were. for that. So uh, Yeah, so they, you still rocking those? 
Yep, they gave me those. Uh, uh, John at Stazworks gave me a custom set of rims because it's really hard to find rims for those things. So, uh, so yeah, still got those set up, and uh, they're just sitting there. They, st- I think they still have some nubbies on them. They, they've been a little mistreated and underused while this project's been going through a full rebuild. So, and yeah. Then, and then I took that body off, and uh, I found another a hard cab for it, and those are those are kind of rare themselves. Uh, it was in France. So, uh, I bought Holy that cow. in February. Yeah. It, you know, it's one of those things that like, it's one of those things you dream to have. And then the guy goes, it's only, you know, X amount of money. And it's like, that it was, it was just stupid cheap. And I'm like, well, it sounds like it's gonna be a pain in the butt, but with that, for that price, I'm kind of curious what, what it would take to get it here. He goes, Oh, it's no problem. I, I ship all my work equipment over in a, in a freight container. I can just throw it in there for you if you want me to. I'm like, yeah. Oh, what? So, Hell yeah. So I've been sitting here and waiting on that thing for a long time. And then there's been, so he actually lived in Montreal. So it had to go from France to Montreal. And then it got stuck in Canada for a while. And it's finally on its way down here, uh, to the States. So I hope to hack that actually next week at the same time I take the motor in to get rebuilt. So, uh, nice. It's fine that it's all finally just now starting to pick back up because it's been just way too hot outside. To, I don't have air or anything like that in the shop. And it's this last week the heat index has been up over a hundred. It's, uh, it's pretty ridiculous. So I actually, my wife loves this. I brought part of the transmission in that I'm rebuilding and, uh, have that sitting inside (laughs) on the kitchen (laughs) table. Uh, it's on the, it's on the uh, coffee table in the living room. So, (laughs) (laughs) so I don't, I would, I think I'd have a divorce if I tried something like that. It's like some of my old Jeep transmissions there's no way i'd, I'd try that because those just the, you know once they get the mud in them and and the water they just stink so bad and this thing did not at all it had no smell to it so and i really just brought in like the top shifting uh plate of it so i'm, I'm converting that from a uh they're a six speed those unimogs are and there's a pretty easy conversion you can do to convert them to an eight speed so you pick oh. up two more gears in it um okay and it's really just uh by uh, cutting some new shifting gates. And then uh, if you want to get really fancy with it, you can uh, do some extra tuning with, with some of the forks to where it gives you a more natural shifting pattern. Because when you do this, it, it gives you a goofy shifting pattern, but you do pick up two extra gears, you know. Yeah. So, That's right. So the, would they be, which way are the, those gears work? Are they a top end or low end? Uh, or somewhere two, in the middle? You'll get them in the middle. Is what it is, oh. and it, that's that's kind of really a, a sweet spot of where you want them with the Unimog. Uh, it's got two low gears, crawler gears, and then you have to go across this massive gate to get over to the four, I guess, road gears. And it's it's really it's really a pain in the ass. You'll see people driving these things, slapping the stick shift so hard, trying to get it over to the high gears, and it's a pain in the butt if you're in some kind of situation where um, you know you're engine needs you to shift but you're you know because of your water mud going uphill climbing whatever that if you do try to take that that big of a time frame it takes to get over there that you're just going to kill it you know so uh it'll give you uh it gives you kind of like an h shifting pattern in the low now and an h shifting pattern in the in the highs so nice okay yeah, so it should yeah, make it a little I'd... more drivable Right, I remember Joe from Carnage saying that he didn't even know that there was another level of gears when he was when he bought his rig and he was driving it out. He was, you know, thought he was maxed out in the gear shift pattern, and he was like going five, seven miles an hour as he's driving away, you know. And yeah, so it, yeah, so it, it's just a it's a medium set of gears in a way. So it's a intermediary kind of between the low and the range or the higher range. Sounds like right. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So it, it uses all the same gears, but it just it moves the two forks inside in a different way to where it uh, connects them differently. And I don't know why they didn't at first. I think later years they did on the on some of the bigger model Unimogs that was built into the transmission. But uh, so over the years, is definitely nothing I figured out. Somebody's figured out how to cut another finish off cutting that H into that uh, shifting plate and uh, right. allow you to hit those gears. That's cool. So, yeah, there's a yeah. man. There's a ton of tweaks that you can do with these things that you only need. You know, is there a place where people can go and figure out all these tweaks? Do you have a, a solution for that? Is there a, a if, some form somewhere that might be able yeah. to help people out? If only, yeah, yeah. The, 
So on uh, the Mercedes forum on I write four by four is probably one of the smallest ones there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's mostly my rig and a couple other guys that do four wheeling type stuff. A lot of people are buying these things now and turning them into overlanding campers and stuff like that. Uh, they either buy these or they go buy sprinter vans. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> um, Tyler. Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, there, there's, I mean, there's some Facebook groups and there's a, there's a whole nother Mercedes forum that, but it's more geared towards like all their cars. Uh, but there is a small Unimog section in there and that's where I think most people hang out. I think that's where I met Joe, uh, a while back. So I've talked to him quite a bit. Um, I'm trying to get him to send me a PTO that he's holding on to. I think he's testing me yeah, to make sure yeah. I'll really find a good use for it because those things are kind of like unicorns too. So <laughs> nice. But, yeah. uh, yeah, no, he's a good guy. And, um, uh, so yeah, on irate, yeah, this whole build's been on there. Um, I haven't posted a lot on there just because I haven't been doing stuff out in the garage. It's been so hot, but, uh, should start cranking that up here soon. Cool. Yeah. So if people want to follow along with your build and your Unimog, they can, Go on to irate four by four and go over to that uh, Mercedes section, and then it's yeah. probably the it's probably the pinned one, right? Let's be honest, you pinned it <laughs> right, at the top. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you have to read the yeah. entire thing before you're allowed to sign up on the site. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's right under the rules section. <laughs> right, right. No, everything I do. No, I'm just kidding. Right, but uh, too funny. Yeah. Oh, that's there. Cool. Well, let's talk about the uh, migration from the form that shall never be named to I rate four <laughs> by four. Um, cause I love this story and I've told a few people the, the last message that was ever posted on, um, pirate four by four, which, uh, was yours. So yeah. what do you know? I, I should actually look it up one day. Um, but do you know when you signed up on pirate? Do you know how long ago that was? No, I know. When we were talking about this, it was I was on there for 17 years. Uh, I don't remember the date. Okay. I, yeah. For some reason, they banned me from the site, so I can't even log into it now. Oh, gee, uh, I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, but that migration, it was. So we'd been on there forever, and uh, just talking about all the other people on there. When I say me, we, but uh, kind of one big dysfunctional family, and uh, it was sold. The guy uh, Lance that kind of started it and maintained it, ran it for so long, sold it, and. Uh, don't blame him one bit for wanting to do it and get out of it for as long as he did. Uh, but the company he sold it to is known for buying these things and, uh, just plastering them full of ads, giving them very limited support. And, uh, they basically just end up killing these things, uh, all these forms with all these years and years of tech. So, uh, everybody, they, they, they made a post saying that this is, they're getting ready to upgrade us. And that's always kind of been the joke, the, the final nail in the coffin for a lot of these forums once they do. And, uh, they said it's going to be done at, uh, this day at this time. And, uh, what they did is they put the site in a, it's like a read only mode. So that the, you can still go through the site, but you can't post and edit or any of that kind of stuff. And they, yeah, I mean, it's a business decision on their end, so they can keep posting ads for the couple of days it takes them to convert to the other form. So, uh, they said the date and the time and I had a prepared post and I said, basically screw this place. Let's, let's go over to this new site that we set up. I'd already had, I've been working on it for about a month and I had, uh, a bunch of members from the site, probably, you know, a dozen or so helping me do some testing and get everything worked out on there. And, uh, when that time was approaching, they were getting ready to shut the site down. I posted my final post on there and I, you know, said, screw this place. Here's a new address. We're all going over here. And, uh, then they locked the site and put it in read only mode. And it sat there for days on the front page of the website. It was just like yeah. my own little, my own little advertisement. <laughs> a free, free advertising <laughs> so, right there. Yeah. And that, that just, you know, kind of shows you how much they, they don't really care about the, their communities or, or the sites that they buy, you would think they would take that down in a heartbeat if they were really worried about traffic. But, but by that point, Pirate had so many pages in the search engines that they, they didn't care about that, you know. So they left it there, and uh, over the next week or two, we had 1,000 people move over, and it just kept growing and growing and growing from there. So That's cool. Was, so uh, eventually yeah. they did catch on to your post? They did. Well, I they never took it down. Uh, when they turned that site off and flipped on the, the new format, it was gone. So, uh, 
they did take it down, but never during their process. They still left it up for days. They probably could have made it a lot more difficult for all of us to move over and find it, uh, if that's the case. And right. then since then, they put in all these checks that if somebody posts irate or posts any pictures with the logo or any of that kind of stuff, it automatically edits it and puts the P back in there. Um, so, and then it be kind of kind of became a game for some of the members to figure out how to leave uh, little clues or breadcrumbs as to where everybody went. So, uh, so it was can you still for a while. you can still post over there though? I thought it was in read only mode. Oh no, no no it's uh it's back it, it was only in read only mode for about three or four days so mm. there's still people that post up on there and uh, oh okay but it's a ghost town there yeah. was like there's there's a one moderator I'm not gonna say his name or anything but he was a diehard he's I'm going down with the ship kind of thing and uh, so he's still there and he's there with an open arms welcome to greet anybody that wants to sign up and post but it's pretty much a ghost town. And I think there's enough clues around there as, as to where everybody w- went. And so when people come over to irate four by four, one of their first posts is, uh, Oh, I found this because of, you know, so-and-so's breadcrumb. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, that's but, fun. Yeah. 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 Too cool. Well, so, um, so I rate four by four came around because of that fallout and the fact that, you know, we all didn't want to be infiltrated with all the amount of ads in your face that they would be posting on there. So have you found that there's a, uh, that there's still this massive community? I, I'm going back to the fact that our form's dead because, I mean, it seems like, you know, yeah, they, they bought this form and we're going to kill the form just by posting ads on it. But it seems like a lot of days now, if people want the Facebook or want a blog or want YouTube side of things to find information, are, are forms really a, a benefit these days? Yeah, again, kind of what we touched on before, I think they're the best way, especially for us to be able to build, uh, you know, just document your build and for people to be able to follow it and help you along. Uh, it's damn near impossible on, on Facebook or Instagram to really follow a whole build from start to finish. Um, but there's, sef- there's certainly enough avenues out there now that people want to try to uh, make make some money off, off their build and whatever, you know, if they want to try doing YouTube or uh, they want to get enough Instagram followers to where they can start getting free stuff and that kind of stuff and more power to them. I, I 100% understand it. I don't blame them one bit for, for doing that, but uh, I would say the community as a whole is, is still very strong. And then I think we're seeing a lot more people start to come back from uh, Facebook and Instagram. I think people are getting tired of the censorship, especially with the way, you know, overly sensitive the world's getting these days and the way they kind of push that down your throat. No matter what your belief is, there's always somebody that believes different and will find some way to put it down your throat there. And, um, our community is, is our community, the off-road community, I think in, in general, loosely kind of thinks and, and plays the same way. So, it just seems like a, a much better fit for a lot of people. So we're starting to see a lot of people come back to that. Um, Good. Yeah. And, and, and just uh, uh, as another example, um, so a lot of the guys at Off-Road and even one of my moderators on the site, uh, they're on another forum that was called, uh, it was for people who do adventure riding. And those are guys, those are like the guys you see at King of the Hammers on their, on their bikes, on their uh, dirt bikes and, uh, Right. They're climbing a mountain and then they set up camp at the top of the mountain kind of thing. You know, these guys get on their bikes, they ride thousands of miles, they camp, they, they pack everything in, they pack everything out. And, uh, so there was another site about, it was called ADV Rider. It was just as old and just as big, if not maybe bigger than Pirate was. Um, so this same company bought them about six months ago. And, uh, right off the bat, those guys came over and they're like, dude, you got to save us. So we set up another forum called uh, ADV Bikes, and that's kind of lovingly now called our sister site, and that's over 1,200 people already. And uh, wow. so all those people are leaving that site just because of uh, that company, Vertical Scope. Uh, I mean, they bought it, and within about two weeks, there was, no joke, 20 ads on the page. You know, we there, uh, ads help pay the bills. We have ads on iRate, but there's... Uh, there's only a few on there. And when you sign up, then pretty much all of them go away. And, uh, I think ads pay the bills, but just that kind of ads is just pure greed and kind of just kills the experience for everybody. So now we're starting to see this other site, uh, grow just because of the way they, 
they treat people and have ads on there. So, uh, right. It gives me a little more faith for forums, kind of going back to your original question. Uh, they're definitely not dead. People still prefer these communities. There's, uh, so I've got the forums set up now to where, uh, like irate and ADV, they both have a, a Facebook account and an Instagram account. And, uh, I've been a software dev forever, so I wrote uh, some code that migrates new posts over to those uh, two platforms just as more of a marketing piece kind of thing to keep casting that net out and drawing people in, showing them where we all went. And uh, we're getting more and more people come over and sign up. And we even have some people that are aggravated about that because they hate those platforms so much that they don't want to even contribute one post there. So I think we're going to find a little bit of everybody out there on the internet doing doing their thing in all different ways. So uh, it's definitely not dead. It's definitely a lot smaller than it used to be, but uh, I don't think they're going anywhere. Yeah, and what I really actually enjoy about the forum is that it's actually some, like, diehards, right? It's the right. people that are there to be are more than willing to give you good information because I have a form for Samantha that's on the for, on on the I write in the Toyota section I or mm-hmm. is it under my own I might no I think it's in the Toyota section and yeah, um there. yeah and I posted a thing that I was going to do an e-locker and the next thing I know I had like five or six people posting go make sure you're getting the correct axle shafts and I'm like aren't all Toyota axle shafts the same? You know, I thought they're all, you know, it's a, it's a Toyota mini truck front axle. Like what's the difference? And they're like, no, there's actually different, like minute differences, but there are different axle shafts. And Mm -hmm. I was like, I had no idea, you know, and it wasn't for, you know, uh, two or three, maybe four people on the form that were voicing me the opinion to like, Hey, make sure that you're checking this, you know, and tell me, ahead of schedule, you know, before I go and order everything and make sure that I, you know, was getting the right parts, which I think is outstanding to have that. It's it's not, I I wouldn't call it a safety net, but it's like this never, you know, there's another level of like um, people making sure that you're doing things correctly or giving you advice one way or another. I mean, it might be not advice that you want to hear, but it's definitely, you know, (laughs) there's that advice out there. Right. Yeah, no, it's definitely, it's, it's, it's the internet. You're going to get the same people that just call you stupid for doing that locker in the first place. No matter what choice you was, you'll find something that somebody that doesn't sure. like it. But, uh, uh, I'd say, you know, just comparing the site to, to the old site back in the day, I think a lot of those people are still on irate, but a lot of those guys have maybe, uh, definitely got older and maybe they're not building as much as they used to, but all those guys are still in those forums watching and helping share that knowledge, which I think is, uh, is pretty awesome. So one of the goals we wanted to do right off the bat was to try to get some, uh, they're always called on, on the other site, they're always called Bibles. So they'd have like the Dana 60 Bible, for example. And that's right. just anything and everything, every stupid little detail you could ever want to know about Dana 60s. And, uh, just in one thread. And right off the bat, once we started this up, we knew we weren't going to be able to bring the data over from, uh, from the old site. So people started organizing on their own to like recreate, you know, quote, Bibles of all these different things. So there's a couple in the Toyota section. There's a couple They're They're all over. And there was nothing that I had to like rally people to do. I said, Hey, I think this would be a good idea. Let's do one a month. And then they basically said, screw it. And they all just kind of like took off and started doing their own Bibles all over the place and building That's cool. them significantly faster than I thought. So, yeah, uh, I remember talking about that when we were uh, with Jason on the wheeling wine and whiskey episode. Yeah. Um, and you were talking about like their goal is to do one a month, you know, and at some point you guys were saying that you could go back and probably scrape, you know, the other website and get that information. But the users on irate were like, no, that stuff's so old now. Let's create our own and let's, right. you know, and we know there's, there's more information out there. There's new versions out there. Let, let's do it right. And let's do it. Let's start from scratch and let's do it correctly the first time. So that was really cool. Um, it's good to hear that the the users just uh, you know picked up that effort and ran with it. That's that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, I think that's one thing that's definitely why you know back in the day there was a just just a ton of builds going. And I think like I said, it's just these guys getting older. 
they're not starting their own builds. We don't have as many, but they're just as active in the ones going on, helping people out like, like what you're just talking about. So it's pretty cool. So the next challenge ahead of us is try to, you know, we got the older guys in there, the guys our age, and probably the younger generation is trying to figure out how to get them in forums. And I think there's quite a few of them that are in there and they're finally starting to figure out the advantage to that. Um, just what I was talking about, having one place for your build and all that. Um, but I think the younger generation is kind of born and raised on, on Facebook and all those apps are going to be the next, uh, big challenge there. Right. I, I can see that, you know, they, they never really were ever on forums. It was, you know, right. <laughs> quote, an older technology at that time. Yeah. Right. Um, right. Where they were all on, you know, Facebook or Facebook or Instagram or uh, MySpace or whatever right. was out there at the right. time. Um, and so I think that, you know, I think they'll migrate. I think it'll, I don't know if there, you really even need to put an effort in there when somebody is looking for information and, you know, I rate four by four pops up and then they start scratching the surface about what is, you know, this forum. And then they start seeing all the information that's available to them. It's, it's really quite, it can be daunting and overwhelming because it's just, there's a lot there. I know that, right. um, Tyler said that he's never really ever been interested in forums and now he's like on it every single day. <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, you know, yeah. he's posting a build of his axles on there and he's, um, you know, just on there all the time talking to our listeners because we have our own section in there, um, for snail trail four by four, do which I do want to come back to. Um, yeah. and you know, it's just, I think it's one of those things where you, you know, yeah, we were on a forum for a while. And then social media came around and we started getting on there. But I think a lot of us are going to come back to forums. I think, you know, the information wealth one is outstanding and the build threads are so much easier to get through and read and follow than somebody's Instagram page. You know, it's, right. you know, you just like, how'd you do that? Or what did you do? And you have to like scroll back through Instagram or something and they, they try to find a post. It's just you know, go to the form, have a form thread and talk about it and do it. And it, it's, yeah, it's just so much easier to, to organize your thoughts that route. Yeah. Any, whatever bill you're doing, like you're working on your axle, you are, you're working on your axles. You can post up like 20 links. I bought this from here and this from here and this from here. And yeah, you can't do that kind of stuff on Instagram, you know? So uh, that's true. Yeah. So when, when somebody finds that page, they land on it. They're like, Oh, this guy did this. Oh, I see where he bought this. I'm just going to go buy that now. And, uh, it's just so much more convenient for sharing that kind of stuff. So, uh, I think the guy, the people that are really into four wheel and doing builds and that kind of stuff, not just, you know, mall crawler type stuff, put their own bolt, bolt on type stuff on. Uh, I think they'll always find their way to forums. Awesome. I agree. So, uh, let's talk about actually the structure of irate four by four a little bit. Um, there's, I know that are there three skulls levels? Uh, the skulls, yeah, there are. So, uh, and that's kind of just a, 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 again a, a spinoff of, of the old site. The the red skulls are the uh, it's kind of the premium membership, so it turns all the ads off on the site. You get access to a couple private forms as well, um, and there's, you get uh, better discounts at our parts counter, and uh, you know a few other perks like that. And then there's the yellow skulls, and those are all of our vendors. So uh, we just significantly dropped the price on that, hoping to get a lot more people in. And again, we just carried over the price from the old site. And these days, we just I'd rather have more vendors supplying more parts to more people than trying to make a buck off of it. So we dropped that to like I think it's only like twenty five bucks, and that's really just more of a, a setup type thing. And then we have uh, blue skulls as well, which is uh, what you guys all are, and those are for more people in the media. So we're really trying to focus on making it. Uh, much more of a, a media outlet for like you guys sharing your podcast where we got a couple of writers that we have a, a hidden section right now. we got a couple of writers that are doing some test articles on there and I'm working with a, an ad company to help them monetize their ads on my site on I rate four by four. You know what I'm saying? Um, those guys put, you know, you know how much work you put into these podcasts. Those guys put just as much work into writing. Um, they deserve some, some compensation for their efforts. And, um, I don't mind doing it. it kind of makes it kind of a pain where it all has to go through me and I rate and my taxes and all that kind of shit. So, um, I'm working on getting all them set up on their own to where it all bypasses 
you know, just like the way you guys are set up, everything goes right around me, straight to you guys, and the same thing with with, the, with these articles too. And these articles will live on forever. Uh, cool. And hopefully, get them some money for for as long as that ad's relevant and people are still searching and landing on it. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I mean, that's one of the things I also really enjoy about the form I rate four by four is that it's always changing. I mean, there's you're adding new things, you're always you're adapting, and that's I mean, it's obviously not dead, right? This is right. A, an ever living, you know, being uh, that's morphing all the time, and you're adding things. And I know that a lot of times that you actually pull your audience, you pull the you know, the, the people on the forum and go like, "Hey, I'm thinking about doing X. Is are you okay with that?" And yeah. you get a you get wild answers to you know legitimate <laughs> answers. I, I yep. remember you uh, asking if um, for name suggestions for what we should call the people that were moving over from Patreon over to Irate. And man, yeah. there was you sent me the link to that uh, that <laughs> thread, and it had some had some names that should I would we're already on the um, we have the e you know, where we're allowed to cuss on the podcast and some of those things, uh, I don't think we're even allowed to say. Um, yeah. But that's, oh. I mean, and that just speaks testament to you um, and the fact that you care about the forum and you care about the people that are on the forum and, you know, um, and you want to keep it uh, alive and moving forward. I do. I, I you know, I, I still have that feeling while I'm the one that technically owns it on paper and I'm the one that manages it and does everything to it. I still don't feel like it was mine. I didn't start this, you know, uh, the whole community moved over. So, uh, I don't want to jump in and start pulling strings. So, uh, damn near everything we do outside of like some kind of security upgrade or any of that kind of basic type stuff. I throw polls up and see, do we want to do this or not? And some people say, yes. Some say you're a moron if you don't, but the community still votes the other way. So we don't do it. Um, uh, and that, that happened a lot uh, more frequently in the beginning as we were just kind of uh, getting the new place set up and all catching our bearings after being at the old place for so long. But And now that I'm setting up that other forum, that ADV bikes, where we still have polls going all the time. Do you guys want this? Do you want to see this? Do you not want to see this? And uh, they're guiding how their community is going to look, feel, and work. So uh, That's cool. Yeah. That's, re- yeah, that's really neat. Yeah, I think it's the way it should be. So... Uh, so as long as I'm running it, that's the way that's the way it's going to run. Everything's going to be a, a major community decision, unless there's some obvious reason for it not to be. And that's like I said, more security, goofy type stuff. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of out of curiosity, this is more of a personal kind of question. Because um, mm-hmm. this isn't your day job. You're not running this forum as you know as a day job. You have a day job. So how many hours do you put in a day? on irate not like fun looking at you know people's posts how many like right. working hours do you put on a day on that so uh within the last month or two significantly less but uh i mean i as silly as it sounds i just i really love that pirate community for what it was and that's why i wanted to do this so bad um it was a big part of helping me grow full wheeling and all that so the last probably six or eight years, I've been, I've been self-employed. So I kind of got out of software development, and I was just doing uh, more uh, more program management in the IT world. And uh, since I was self-employed, I, I was able to really slow down my schedule and not take on as much work. So I would say for probably the first year and a half, two years of uh, irate, I was definitely doing it full time, probably more than forty hours, just trying to get everything up and running, get everything going good. Um, I had to learn about, learn about SEO stuff and all that kind of stuff. That wasn't really all that marketing stuff. Wasn't my forte. I think actually, I don't think it was really till I met you guys and you guys were all over Instagram. I'm like, shit, I got to figure out this Instagram thing, you know, <laughs> cause I, I wasn't sorry huge about on, that. On a, no, no, it's, it's been a good <laughs> Avenue. It's, it's been a good Avenue, but, uh, I put a lot of time into it and it wasn't until recently that, uh, I kind of went back and took a, a full time job. So it's a little mess now, but I still, I'm still on there maybe a couple hours every night, uh, you know, just reading for enjoyment or trying to learn something or seeing, uh, what I could do to make it better. Like this week, I just spent a couple hours setting up some Amazon cloud stuff to help serve images better, faster and make sure emails get delivered better. So, um, cool. Now that, now that I've gone into more of a full time job, it, 
takes that advertising money and we'll able to put that all right back into the site. So I think uh, I got a lot of cool stuff to start adding to the site. So Nice. I like that. Yeah. I like to hear that for sure. Um, one of the things that you, you talked about it quickly, but one of the be- major benefits of becoming a Red School member is you have a parts counter. And, right. and from my experience, if you're interested in getting a part, you pretty much have it on, in the parts counter to some extent, or you have contact with the person. And if you don't have contact with the person, you'll go get contact with that company <laughs> yeah. and you'll talk to them and see if you can work out a deal. Um, and so I, you know, I'm sure the percentages are, differ for every company out there, but can you talk a little bit about the parts counter and being a Red School member? Yeah. So, uh, the parts counter, anybody get in the parts, uh, once you sign up on the site, anybody can get on there and shop for parts. Um, it's a extremely keep it simple, stupid front end. Um, like I said, I'm not big enough marketing and all that kind of stuff. Like Amazon, you see all their, they got a shitload of pictures and all kinds of probably bogus reviews on stuff. So this doesn't have that. You, you pretty much need to come with the exact part number that you need. You put it in there and I've got the back end tied into, uh, a lot of different wholesalers and warehouses all over the States that will find your part for you. And if you're a Red Skull member, you get uh, a little bit more of a discount on your parts. So uh, general members, they can only order things that I can find in stock. So that way it's more of a simpler transaction. But if you're that Red Skull member and you're trying to find something that's been back ordered, uh, I'll reach out to the manufacturer and uh, having those connections allows me to put those orders in for those guys. So, you know, there may be something back ordered for three weeks that you may not get on some online store for four or five weeks, but I can get your order in and paid. And, uh, as soon as that comes back off their manufacturing line, it's on its way to you type thing. So that's kind of one of the other advantages to being a Red Skull as well. Yeah, that's, I thought that was really awesome. I, signed up as a Red Skull member originally and I actually uh, worked with you and bought a bunch of the parts for Samantha and mm-hmm. uh, the the building the axles and some other upgrades on there being a Red Skull member. Um, hence forth or since then, you know, I've moved over to being a Blue Skull member with uh, media and doing the podcast and having a um, being able to get benefits for the YouTube channel inside um, that side of things. But yeah, you know, I thought that, I mean, that was a massive benefit. I was trying to talk to companies as a YouTuber and as a podcaster. And I literally, I sp- was talking to a company and I was talking to you and you gave me a better price than me directly going to the company. <laughs> so I can't say that's going to work for everybody and or right. whatever company people go to, but it's just, you know, it speaks testament that you're, once again, you're here for the community. You're here to try and help people. You want these builds to happen. You want people to have these builds. You want to make it easy for people to get parts and and do these builds. And hopefully in return, I think is, you know, you share your build that you're doing here on the forum. And I think right, it's a, yeah. you know, it's an excellent circle that you're creating to, keep builds going and keep the farm moving. Right. Yeah, no, there's uh, we, we, we get parts from all over the place and we get some killer deals. And there's sometimes there's, you know, especially with COVID, a lot of these uh, manufacturers have learned they can easily start doing this straight from their own warehouses. So a lot of these guys are backing off and selling from their site only type stuff. So uh, some of the numbers and some of the stuff we're able to see are going down. Some people will give like wholesalers even a worse price than what they get on their site. So it's one of those things you always, shop around, but before you actually pull the trigger, hit up the uh, parts counter and see what, what it finds uh, throughout the country for you. So, um, yeah. yeah, it's worked out good. But, I mean, my ultimate goal is I'd, I'd much rather have all those manufacturers signed up as vendors and dealing with people directly. So we have some guys, we have a couple of vendors that sell, like, uh, like Yukon Gear and Axle stuff, and he gets, like, such amazing prices that I won't even sell them through the parts counter. Um I'd much rather have those guys on there working with all the members and than me using wholesale channels to do that. So, uh, but we're trying to grow it. It's, it's grown slowly. Cool. Yeah. Is there any other features or, uh, benefits besides, uh, you know, the new podcast form that's, uh, you know, going on? Is there, um, other avenues or other things besides the parts counter and the skulls? Is there other things to iterate four by four? 
Uh, yeah. Um, no, the, the podcast one's uh, probably the latest one. They got you guys and the Wheel and & Wine Whiskey guys on there. Uh, Metal Cloak just became a vendor on there. I think they were interested in taking Modern Jeeper on there as well. Um, but we were kind of, you guys were the guinea pigs, so we were, we were kind of waiting to see how you guys, how this whole thing has worked out for you guys. Uh, so th- we got a few other things up our sleeve. Again, if you're a Red Skull member, you'll have access to the private forum where I probably talk about uh, where the site's going more than I do in just the general chit-chat section, where just the general members are. Um, those are definitely, the Red Skulls are definitely more your, your diehards, people that have more heart and uh, care about the site and community way more than just a, someone who might log in to ask a couple questions real quick, you know. So okay. we post that and we guide that on there. And uh, we have several ideas that are going to be coming down the pipe here soon. Cool. No, yeah. no, no teasing going on here. You're just gonna you're gonna hold it behind it's that all, Red Skull layer. No, it's uh, it's all uh, community benefit type stuff. I think we're we're looking at probably trying to set up some sort of nonprofit. I didn't realize the the length and time it takes to set that kind of stuff up. So yeah, um, that's one thing that we're looking into, and we want to start getting into doing some grants and providing uh, local clubs with things like uh, chainsaws and. You know, whatever we can do to uh, help clear the trails. I listen to your guys' podcast and uh, Wheel and Wine. I'm on the computer all day, so I'm always up to date on your guys' shows and the amount of uh, trail cleanup and stuff you guys do out there. We don't, we have that here, but it's not nearly to the extent that you guys have to do it. We don't have as many trails. Most of the stuff around here that's, that's not public access is all privately owned, and they kind of do that stuff on their own. But just listening to the volume that you guys do, and like it, we need to start sending some chainsaws and all that kind of stuff you know there's so we have some fundraising ideas to start help contributing in that kind of stuff to those areas so cool we do have yeah uh, i know that sorry go on uh, we we have uh, uh a couple of the charities that you can buy their membership straight through the website and again that money goes straight through i don't even see it it goes straight to those uh charities so uh, Cal four is one of them and, uh, the blue ribbon coalition. We just set them up on there. So you can sign up, you get the exact same membership that you do going through their own sites, but it just, it's good for us to help say that, Hey, we're driving membership to you. And then they talk about it and mention about it and it's just all, all good, good vibes. So trying yeah. to set up a lot yeah, of that, that type stuff. That's awesome. And it, I mean, it's definitely good to be able to track uh, where things have come from. I mean, we've yeah. talked about it in the past. It's, you know, uh, on, at least in the podcast, you know, we have a, we have a few discount codes down in our show notes and, you know, mm-hmm. and those are generously given to us by other companies that, you know, had wanted to be a part of the snail trail four by four platform. And, um, and we've had listeners go like, Oh, I bought these, you know, I bought some parts from a uh, mob armor, you know, and we're like, cool. Did you use the discount code? They're like, no, I wanted to give them full money. I'm like, yeah, but, they didn't, then you don't know that it came from us. Like they, you know, right. there's no tracking on our right. end that says, then we can't go back to Mob Armor and go like, Hey, how's the discount code going? You know, it's so it's really cool to be able to be able to track one way or another, whether it's discount codes or sh- straight pass through like you can do. Um, and you right. can, you know, talk to those other corporations and be like, look, you know, we drove, you know, 300 people to your site the other, you know, right. this last month, you know, and, and you're so central or your your niche of the form is, you know, the exact people that those corporations need to be working with, the Blue Ribbon Coalition and Cal Four Wheel, and, you know, and any others that you're going to add here in the future. So that's, yeah, that's right. re- that's really cool. I'm proud of you that you're doing that. Yeah, no, I, that's, it's what, it's what the old site used to do. It's just what we're trying to do. Again, I'm not trying to recreate or anything, just wanting to help rebuild the, uh, the off-road community here and, kind of give them a a new home so cool right on well um i think we're coming up to the a good close here i do want to give a shout out to uh wheeling wine and whiskey because you and i and jason did do an episode a few years ago when we're all on the lake bed um i did go back and find that number which is not actually a number they have it labeled as a bonus episode but it uh, is between episode 93 and 94. So if you go okay. back to Wheeling Wine and Whiskey, uh, 93 and a half, 
That's the bonus <laughs> episode uh, with Austin, uh, Jason, and I. So you can go check out that and um, learn more about I rate four by four and uh, hear some more stories of Austin and the Unimog. That's for sure. Um, is there any shout outs you want to do? Is there anybody that you want to say thanks to or any uh, sm- sponsors? I, you know, um, I don't no, know. Do you, uh, you have anything like that? I don't. You know, I. I've got some awesome sponsors, uh, but uh, it's the same thing. The people that I've taken in return, I've been able to give them ad space type stuff. So, and uh, that that's kind of how I also get a little, little few extra things out of this. So, it's fun. I just really want to push. We do rig sponsorship. Uh, we really want to help those guys trying to get into racing, those guys uh, trying to get into the Everyman Challenge. So we help sponsor parts for those guys. So, and all we ask is they put their builds on our site. So I really want to get the word out and make sure those guys know we're here for them to help them with their builds. And uh, we're just looking for more podcasters and writers to help uh, build content. So, Cool. All right. So if you're a writer, a podcaster, a YouTuber, if you're doing yeah. any sort of content in the off-road industry, uh, you know, reach out to Austin. Um, if you're a racer or want to be racer, uh, reach out to them as well. They'll help you out in one way or another. How can people get a hold of you if uh, there are any of those things? Yeah, I would just sign up on the site, and uh, I'm, I'm there under Austin. So that, or if you just use the contact us form, those all come to me too. So, but uh, I'd say jump on the site and just send me a message. Cool. And then you're you did allude to it as well, but you are on Facebook and you are on Instagram. Is there any other platforms that you're at? TikTok? Uh, no. No, no. Uh, for the last, no, not TikTok. Uh, I do have an OnlyFans that helped me get through the slow times of the forum. Ah, so you haven't got rid of the flagpole? <laughs> nope, it's still there. It's there got me go. and my, it's got me and my toes all over it. It helped pay nice. pay the bills while I was setting the site up. <laughs> oh, no, just, uh, I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. <laughs> just, uh, just Facebook and Instagram for uh, for those two sites. So. Cool. All right, and uh, this is the part that Tyler usually throws at me, but I'm going to throw it at you. Austin, do you have any final words? Uh, just keep building, man. You guys it's, you guys sign out with that all the time, and that's what we love to see, and that's what we love to watch. So just keep posting and share it. Awesome. And with that, my friends, keep crawling. So this, this piece of rope was walking down the street. He was really thirsty, walks into a bar and he says, uh, goes up to the bartender and he says, Hey, can I get a, uh, can I get a drink? Bartender says, uh, no, sorry. We don't, we don't serve drinks to rope here. He's like, Oh man. So he goes outside and, uh, he's still dying of thirst. First person he comes across goes, Hey, do you think you could do me a favor and, uh, maybe tie me in a knot and, and split my ends? The guy's like, that's weird. That's what he does. Ties him in a knot, splits his end. And the, uh, he goes right back into the bar and he says, hey, bartender, can I get a drink? The bartender says, uh, aren't you the same piece of rope I just said we don't serve drinks to? And he goes, no, I'm afraid not. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. I like it. That's like uh, you're, the mushroom walks into a bar. No, I haven't heard that and one. And he walks up to the bartender and he goes, hey, bartender, can I get a drink? He goes, no, you, you can't have a drink. You're a mushroom. He's like, no, no, I, I'm a fun guy. <laughs> that's a good one much sure I th- my daughter had told me one the other day something about a a duck and a bunch of nails or something i'll have to think of that one uh, yeah a duck walks into the bar same thing right a duck walks into the bar and he goes up to the bartender the bartender says or he goes can i order a drink and he goes no no uh, you know we don't we uh no you can't have a drink you're you know you're a duck or something i, I think that's somewhat how it goes and he goes all right fine so the next day the duck comes walking back into the bar hey go bar- bartender can i get a beer and goes no no duck you can't have a beer get out of here third day the duck comes walking into the bar he goes up to the bartender and goes hey bartender can i get a beer 
And the bartender goes, no, duck, you can't have a beer. And if you come back in here, I'm going to nail your beak to the bar. Yeah. And then so the duck goes, fine, whatever, and leaves. And he goes, the fourth day, duck comes walking back into the bar. He goes, hey, bartender, you got any nails? And the bartender's <laughs> like, what? No, I don't have any nails. Well, then can I have a beer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. I like that one as well. Yeah. 